3210. Look, we're here. <laughs> and everybody see here. There's here are. thousands of people watching right now. <laughs> there's some, um, well, there's the, A decent the people who, yeah, the people who really want to learn some cool stuff, which we're going to show you today with uh, some more advanced features with selection control nodes, um, which I think is probably one of our biggest upgrades within the selection, uh, the control nodes in general that we did. And Thomas is going to take a step deeper into uh, incorporating some light scripting. I don't think it's overwhelming at all. It's pretty cool where you can really leverage uh, data sets. In this case, we're going to show EPL and how to assign uh, colors, team names, short team names across a composition very easily. So um, Thomas gave us a little preview earlier and it looks as a non-scripter, a hack, I like to call myself. I get it. Um, so I'm excited to dive into this and please, I'll encourage people who are joining us today to um, ask questions for sure. Um, Cause that's what we're here to do to try to get some knowledge from our collective group to everybody out there. So let's dive in. I'm excited. Okay. So let me share my screen. And I have two of them. So I'll take this one. So you should see my singular dashboard now. Is that right? Okay. Yes. So what I've downloaded before is uh, the fresh soccer composition uh, from uh, the template library. And I, I created the copy. So in case I'll break something, I always can go back uh, to the original. And let's start with this one. And just, so I'm going to preface this real fast before Thomas dives in. We're going to have a template ready for you guys to download in the template library when we're finished. So this is more of just watch and maybe absorb the information uh, rather than a, you know, complete follow along. So cool. That's it. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, this uh, soccer template, it uh, has three sub compositions, uh, a full screen matchup. There is this core bug and there is this lower third matchup. And uh, we're going to, um, use the selection control node, which are the latest updated functions uh, to control um, all three uh, subcompositions, at least the, the information, which the content, which is uh, unique to all of them. So let's have a look. Let's add uh, a selection uh, control node, and we'll call that team one. We have two teams, one on the left side and one on the right side. And uh, uh, the control nodes, they look like that. It's a, a JSON array. Uh, each of the elements has an ID and has a title. So let's dive into that right now. Uh, and uh, I'm going to link the name two to the control node in the root because there where, where we've defined the selection control node. And uh, we see I didn't yet create the, the number two one. So let's take the number one and uh, link it to the team selection control node number one. So now when I change it uh, from title one to title two, what we see is that it's always the ID which is attached. So to add, get some content, what I I did uh, previously is I used uh, the uh, Premier League clubs uh, and created a JSON uh, containing the names and some additional information uh, and brought it into that format uh, to match our uh, selection uh, JSON format. And then it basically looks like that. So we have the ID, it's uh, and the title and uh, in the first approach all of them are more or less the same so i just copy and paste this uh into the selection control node i just note the json source is manual which means that we can manual enter this here in this edit field down there and now i i can change the names and uh, well, as we would have expected it, uh, the content updates directly here. So let me add a second uh, selection control node for 
the team number two. There I go. And uh, I also do the same here with uh, the same JSON into the team number two. And now I link the team name text to the root control node for the team number two. And we see it takes the, uh, the control node content. I didn't yet modify that. So you'll see the default text, which is uh, uh, ID one. Now when I switch it, of course it updates. Uh, we also have team names up there in the score bug. And so I uh, go into the score bug composition and also link uh, the team names there to the root control node team number one and uh, the, the team name two text to team two. And we'll see now both of them uh, update uh, accordingly because they show exactly the same data. Um, what else can we do with uh, uh, with selection control? There is a lot more. Of course, we also want to control the icons which are here and the, the uh, image icons uh, are also used uh, here in uh, the full screen matchup um, uh, overlay. So I prepared another, a, a second control node JSON, which looks like that. Um, we, we just learned that the ID always is uh, assigned uh, to the image property or to the, to the property of the widget, either to the text where I link it to or uh, to the image URL when I link it uh, to there. So that's what we, we now prepare. And I'll add two more selection control nodes. Uh, one is the team one, I call that logo. And then I have the team two uh, logo, which is there. And I copy and paste the JSON which I've prepared uh, into this uh, edit fields there. There we go. Now we, we see, of course, the, the same uh, content on, on, on both of them. The nice thing, what we've added here is uh, we've added uh, the, uh, the option that you can select and modify the display format. And uh, well, if it's just text that you use in the ID, then of course we just display text. Uh, if you use a color, then you can display an icon of the color. And if there is an image URL, uh, we can select that and then show the image URL here, which is uh, a lot nicer because it uh, allows you and it gives you a visual feedback. Okay, you can now. also it, you can also search right inside of the control node. I don't believe I'm not sure if that was something that was available prior to this recent update that we did, but um, within the control app um, or in this fill in form you know area where you're testing, you can actually search for a team name as well in in the selection dropdown, which is nice if you have a really long list of um, mm -hmm. items. Filter use filter. Right. Yes, uh, if nice. you have a lot of of items there then the list gets really, really long. And so using and activating the filter there then uh, lets you to, to enter characters uh, and it's a full text search. So uh, it also finds matching items uh, when the string which you enter is a subset uh, within what you have defined there. So this is, is actually pretty, pretty, uh, pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have uh, one control node uh, linked to the name and one control node um, uh, linked to the image, which uh, well can cause it a bit confusion because the user now has uh, uh, to keep both control nodes in sync. So wouldn't it be nice to have an option uh, where you have a single control node and uh, um, well, assign multiple properties and update multiple properties at the same time. Well, of course, this is what, what our R&D also was, was talking about. And uh, there actually is an option. Uh, let's look at that here uh, in the Teams selection control node, which is uh, just text and I'll just select the arsenal. 
which is the first item there. So what we what you we can do and what you can add as a as a third property uh, here into that JSON is that you can add an icon. And uh, when this icon property uh, is uh, defined and it has a proper value, and I'll copy and paste the image URL um, from uh, Arsenal into this icon. There we go. So you see what happens. So now uh, we see uh, the icon of Arsenal and Arsenal. But even if uh, there, if we, we don't use the ID as the image here. And I noticed, Thomas, that when you did that, you didn't actually have to change the display format. So it's almost like a little bit of a Easter egg or something. Uh, you, do you know uh, what I mean? Like the display format doesn't have to switch from text. Yeah, uh, right. The selection box, uh, it uh, uh, checks if there is an, an, an icon available for a specific element which is selected. And if that's the case, it immediately um, enables the icon display and, and shows it um, uh, here in the drop-down list. That's cool, without yeah. having and to of have course, ID. Uh, you, you still have the, the option to enter uh, to enter a filter and then see all the, uh, the items that are associated. Okay. Very nice. Good. So, but now we have okay. three properties in here. There is the ID, there is the title, there is there is the icon. Um, but we only can link the ID to um, the text or to the image. How to do that? Uh, well, this is a bit, let's say, um, more advanced and it requires uh, some composition script. So, so what you're saying, Thomas, is that right now all of these selection control nodes are linked to specific properties, only one property. Like you could, well, right. you have multiple properties, but it only pulls one value from that JSON payload. Right. Um, and it, it that makes sense. always pulls the ID if you directly link it. So, yeah. so just keep that in mind. Uh, the icon property, which is here, it's just used uh, to beautify uh, and to enhance uh, the, the drop-down links and gives you a visual feedback for that. So nice. uh, now uh, let's have a look, have another look and have another um, topic which I want, want to address. Uh, previously, what we recognized is that some of these names are really, really long. And they may fit uh, down there in the lower third uh, uh, match up graphics, but uh, they are definitely too long for uh, for this scorebook. So what I've prepared is uh, uh, another chase, which is using the ID uh, with the name. Then it. Uh, uses the try code as the title. You also can do it can do it the other way around. Doesn't doesn't matter. And uh, then there is the icon. So now I just copy and paste that. And that's what, what we're gonna use uh, into uh, my both selection control nodes. I'll see the try code here. And when I select one, yeah, uh, it still updates of course uh, the ID because that's what I've linked. So now let me unlink that because we, uh, when we use composition scripting, and uh, this is what I, I strongly recommend uh, when you use composition scripting, uh, always update widget properties directly. Uh, don't uh, mix composition uh, uh, scripting with uh, link control nodes. So this can lead into confusion easily. So there's this one and we don't have the matchup uh, linked somewhere. Okay, now let's look into composition scripting. You can open the composition script editor with this, this icon here. And uh, well, at, at the beginning, all the composition scripts 
they are empty and there are, are various composition scripts. There's an, an, a global script and there is a, a composition script for each of the subcompositions and we will use almost all of them. Uh, if you want to get into composition scripting, um, I recommend uh, looking at and into the singular developer portal and uh, the composition script uh, scripting section, it gives you a, a really good overview of what you can do and, and how things work. So the functions that we're gonna use are more or less described in the quick start. And uh, when we look at this example, it uh, describes how to find the widget in a composition and how to set a widget property. Because um, this is what, what we want to do. We want within uh, this lower matchup and the full screen matchup and the scorebook, we want to talk to specific widgets. And all the widgets, they have a name. So there is this team one name text. Uh, this is uh, the, the widget containing uh, the team one text, and there is the team two name, and then there are uh, the logos, and then there, there are rectangles in the background. Uh, that uh, uh, contain the color. So, and uh, the goal and, of this, right, Thomas, is to reduce the amount of selection control nodes you have, so that uh, uh, yes, yes, team is, one controls all of these fields, and team two controls all of these different fields for team two, rather yeah. than property, right, rather than mm -hmm. a bunch of different control nodes. You just get to set you set team one once, and it populates the whole graphics package with that information. That's the that's the aim, and that's where we need to uh, introduce scripting. Yeah. Uh, the the goal is to simplify the the user's UI, so there is only one control node uh, that uh, allows to control multiple properties. Like as mm -hmm. you said, the team name, the try code, the image, the color, and even additional information. Mm -hmm. So there is this comp find widget, uh, when we just uh, have a quick look here. So what this function does, um, it uh, searches in the composition object, which is this one for, for a widget with a specific name. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, names are within uh, the singular composer, uh, they are not unique. You can have 10 times the name rectangle or text, but this is pretty confusing. Um, so when you use composition scripting, uh, use unique names. That uh, you, uh, Using unique names simplifies your life easily uh, when you use composition script. Um, then this function returns all the widgets with a specific name. And when you use a unique name, then the first widget in that array is what you actually want. Uh, then once you have this widget, there is a function that's called set payload. And with the set payload function, uh, you, you define a JSON. And this is uh, pretty similar to what you see in the, in the um, control node JSON uh, to assign the text. And then you just set the text or you have the field gradient for the color or the image property and to send the image here. And, and those two functions are those ones which we will heavily use. We use it slightly in a different way. Because uh, what I'm doing is I'll select the, the, the global script and uh, load the boilerplate with the utility function. And uh, I also recommend doing that because uh, when you use these uh, global functions, like here, this get widget function. Um, if you have a typo in the widget name, or if uh, the designer changed the name of the widget, uh, you'll see um, a console log, the console that uh, um, a widget cannot be found, and you'll see the name which, which uh, might have changed. So always use these functions. Okay. Then the next thing what we're going to do is uh, I'll, I'll just copy and paste over some some parts of the code so you don't you don't need to watch me uh, watch me typing. Uh, the first thing what we need here in the global script is uh, a reference to our composition uh, objects for the matchup for the score and for the lower uh, matchup graphics. 
And uh, then uh, what we do is, well, also do it down, down here. Um, we'll have the two control nodes, the team one and two, team two control nodes, uh, which will just get down here. So now if we, in the composition script, what we need is we need to access this information which we've entered down here into this chase. How do we do that? Actually, that's pretty easy. Um, you can see this information um, here in uh, the uh, UI by just clicking up on the model. And then you scroll down. This, this looks a bit confusing because there is a lot of information there. But down here, you'll see that there is the selection control node with the ID team one, and that's all the selections which are there. And this array is what we what we want to access um, as a uh, as a lookup team. So let me show you how you can test these functions. Um, I opened the uh, the uh, uh, browser console and using just control P, I'll open the root script, which is here. And I'll set, uh, and there we see the, the the code, the script code, which was entered. The browser console does that. And it lets you set a control no, uh, stop points, which is uh, pretty helpful if you want to, to test code and functions live. So uh, that's the init function where we add the stop point, And th this is the composition object. So the composition object, has a lot of functions. There is this this find find widget, find group, and and, and uh, there is also a, a set payload and a get payload function. You can control animations. Uh, all this uh, entire model is described pretty in detail on the developer portal. What we want is uh, this get model here. So I say it's the node model, because that's the control nodes. And we'll just have a look there, get model. There we go. Now we get an array because we have defined multiple uh, control nodes. And there is one with the ID with team one. Okay, so let's say that's the, the team node is uh, node model. Uh, not find because that's an array. Uh, and um, what we need is the ID, and the ID needs to be team one. I hope I didn't make a typo. Ah, there is a typo because there is a is a blank. There we go. Now this is correct. Uh, and now within the team node, we have the selections. And that's pretty easy. So that's the the team look up table uh, that's uh, uh, did he freeze something froze uh -oh. thomas is thomas is frozen he is frozen. so i guess just to recap what he's doing is he's pulling in um the selection control node JSON, which we saw um, when we were inside of the main composition, uh, mm -hmm. the script editor, so that we can access all of these different fields of information and then spit them out to as many widgets as we want, rather than just assigning it to um, one property to one property. So let's, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he must have lost his internet. I could, um, there he goes. Nice back. He's back. Yeah. I'm I'm back. Okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't recognize that I I, I lost you. So so where <laughs> did my connection uh, stop? Um, go back. Um, I think you were just getting the model, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just okay, good. Shown where to get the model. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Right there. So. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting getting the, the model, writing it into a, a variable. So this returns an array for all uh, the control nodes. 
-hmm. And there is our team one selection control node, which we see here. Uh, so I, I access that just by finding an, an element with the uh, with the ID. And then uh, the selections there, this is the team lookup table, which we want to access. And this is what I do here. And uh, th there we see the content. That's all what, uh, what we need are uh, here at at the at the beginning and so what i'll do is i'll i'll just copy these lines uh into the composition composition script which is there so now there's a little bit more what what we need to do because what uh, we need is we need a, a function uh, and I call this composition that's a that's a function and uh, this function it uh, uh, gets the the team one ID and the team two ID uh, because this is uh, what we more or less get here. So this I already can prepare. And uh, then in the next step, we'll see what we're going to do with this. There's one and uh, it's the other one. Good. So what should this function do? Well, every time something is changed, we call this function and we want to update uh, the lower match up, the score bug, and the full screen matcher. I'm just uh, going, going to, to show that for the for the lower matchup. Uh, what we also define then here is uh, uh, a function we call it a function that calls update composition. So this is the easiest way. And uh, uh, what we'll define there then is the uh, team details. Now let's say team one details and team two details. But this now is, is a little bit more because uh, our our team one details, and that's what we're gonna, gonna search for, is the team lookup table. And it's the team lookup table. And we are going to search for an element and where the, the element now it needs to check here the ID. This is this one here. That's the ID. Is equal uh, what was selected uh, here, which is actually the the ID. This is what the the payload returns. So when we when we look down there, so the the payload uh, returns the ID of the selection control. In this case, what we'll do is ID is the T1 ID. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'll just copy and paste that from here. So to make sure I didn't do any, any typos. So now uh, we introduced the function. So we need to define this function in the lower matchup. And uh, what I'll do is just copy and paste the function which I've, I've uh, prepared earlier uh, here uh, into the composition script. What does this do? Uh, so at the beginning in the, in the initialization, uh, we get references to all the widget properties that we want to modify. In this case, it's the name, the logo of team one and team two. There is another one, uh, color, which we don't, don't uh, currently don't, don't use. So we would just uh, uh, comment that out. And we defined a function update composition uh, by extending the composition object. So you can, you can do that. And that's a very elegant and recommended way also to exchange data from one composition to another. That's the easiest way. It's, it's much better and uh, and more efficient than um, updating control nodes in subcompositions. 
uh, always use something like that. Uh, and in here, we use the, the global functions to set the widget properties. And again, uh, these functions are uh, defined there. So the widget uh, set widget property takes the widget object, the property and the value, and then constructs a JSON, uh, which uh, exactly looks like this here described in the um, on the developer portal. So and in, in case when we've done everything right, so we we actually can can test it and uh, yeah, let's just let's test it. When I modify this here, nothing happens. Why is that the case? Okay, let me save it. Oh, now something happened. How mm -hmm. does this come? Well, that's actually pretty easy. Uh, we call this update composition function just on the initialization, but not when changing the payload. So therefore, uh, we can add uh, the payload changed listener. And the payload changed listener uh, then uh, also can call just this function. What I'll what I'll just do is I'll just uh, uh, copy this part of the code and uh, move it here so I don't need to type that. So now whenever the payload on this particular composition changes, uh, we'll grab the payload. Ah, oh, there is something missing. Of course, we, we, we need to grab the payload. I, I deleted that previously. And then we get the team ID one, team ID two, uh, and call this update composition function, which is this one. And now uh, the content is changing every time uh, when we modify. Uh, and change the, uh, select the, a, a new team in the payload. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, the, what we've done with the lower matchup, of course, we can do that uh, with the score bug as well. Uh, the score bug has uh, just the two team names, which we're going to modify. And uh, I'll just copy and paste that here. And uh, this is grabbing the team name one and team name two. And then there is the update composition function. We call it the same. It also, it also uh, then sends the team details like uh, to the subcomposition. And in this case, we'll take the title. We assign the title. Uh, and the title's that right the code, right? which is the tri-code, so which you'll notice here. And of course, what we also need to do is we yep. need to add root. And call this function every time when we modify and when we change it. So now we change the selection in the root. We'll update uh, the logo and the full name uh, in the matchup, and we'll update the the try code. Nice. Uh, in the score bug. Yeah, that's way better than setting three different. Oh yeah. Drop downs for yeah. each team, so six total, just two now. That's great. Yeah. So uh, there's even a bit more, but what you can do with uh, the selection control node and when organizing and preparing your selection chasens carefully. Um, what I noticed when just copying and pasting links and, and grabbing colors uh, from the Premier League, I noticed uh, that there is the, uh, the, the year where the team, the club was established. There is the stadium name and, and of course the capacity. So I thought it might be quite cool to also include that information. 
yeah. um, into a JSON and have that available uh, to display. So what I uh, what I, I prepared is uh, this file, this JSON file. Um, as the ID, I just use the ID because I, I don't, uh, I just want to have that as a reference. It needs to be a unique ID. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I have the title and the icon. Um, I saw that some of the teams have a long name. Some of them have a, have a short name. Some of them have very, very long names. Um, I edit the dry code. I edit the color. Then there is the the established and state uh, and uh, some more details about the stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, you can use then this uh, also in the selection JSON and parse it in the same way as as we did it um, now. But there is even more you can do uh, to keep it more flexible. Because uh, uh, just imagine that uh, uh, the capacity in a stadium changes. So the stadium name changes because there is a new sponsor. So then you would have to go to the composition, uh, open the composer, change the JSON, and uh, uh, reload it in your control app, which can be a, a lot of hassle if that happens quite frequently. So what we, uh, what we prepared and edit uh, recently is uh, you can update and also host JSON files or just drop, copy and paste that uh, here into the dashboard. And we'll provide uh, this for you guys in that um, template download that we're going to provide after this. And you'll see that email that we send out um, and in the video description, if you're watching a replay of this, um, you'll have access to this JSON payload. Yeah. So. You can upload that to the dashboard and you can see it there. And you even can edit there. Uh, change the name, change the long name, short name, uh, and things like that. We'll see how that works. And uh, there are also uh, some things where you need to be a bit careful. And now let's go back to, to this here. So how can I utilize this JSON file? Well, actually, that's uh, pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Uh, within uh, the selection control node, uh, you can define the source for the JSON either manually, then this is what you see here, or you see you define a URL. And that's what we're going to do now. So we'll take the URL from the JSON, but by, by double clicking it, it opens uh, up in the browser and you can just see it and watch it and either copy paste it from there, or you use this copy button in the inspector mode, and then just paste it here. Now there is an error. Uh, as soon as uh, the JSON is valid, uh, you, you'll see it here. And uh, well, with all the latest information, the greatest information, which is there. Thomas, do you can speak to why someone might want to use a URL versus something manual, like we see just there, except until you just switched it? Uh, yeah, well, that's uh, that's uh, really easy to um, um, to to answer because there is uh, this Brighton and and uh, Hof, which is a very very long uh, team name. I've, I've never seen a, a team name that as long as this one, <laughs> and uh, the long name is fine, but uh, even the title, which is used as the short name, it's really, really long. And uh, well, you can just go there and uh, let's say shorten it to the right name, which you want, save it. And uh, uh, then there you go. The next thing you need to do, you see it, it's still there. You need to uh, refresh um, your composition to refresh the browser, then it automatically loads the, the latest data. And now we see Brighton looks like that. So basically you can edit the JSON outside of any of your build files and the composition. Yes, you yes. You, you, you can edit the JSON outside, make sure that the, the format is right. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then when reloading the browser, reloading the output URL, reloading your app, it automatically shows uh, the, the latest uh, modifications. Um, there is a, a reload button, but I, I uh, uh, let's say it's an expert feature. So just keep in mind, you need to refresh the browser, refresh the app, uh, and refresh the output URL, which is important to load the latest uh, uh, JSON uh, with all the latest updates. And you can also, inside of that JSON source URL field, you can reference um, JSON that's not even hosted in your dashboard. So if you have it right. hosted elsewhere, um, if you're advanced like that, that's right. the use case. OK, now there we go. Um, we are back to our script, and we yeah, we are not gonna gonna use this this model anymore. Uh, but we still need uh, uh, the let's see, uh, we still need uh, the the team lookup table. What I say is just define this as as undefined, so that we 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 have it defined as as a variable there. So now we need to load an external JSON. We know the JSON URL, which is this one, but how do we load it? Well, um, that's actually um, not too complicated. Uh, you load it, let me just refresh it, and we also have the, the latest uh, uh, version loaded here, but of course we, we now get an, an error because uh, uh, we, we don't address that uh, the team lookup table now has, has no data. But we will get data very, very soon. You load uh, an external JSON file using uh, the uh, JavaScript fetch API. And uh, there is a nice description on uh, developer Mozilla uh, which you can use. And uh, the easiest way here is if you just want to have a, to, to get a JSON um, is you can copy and paste this function and let's define it. Let's add it down here. So this is an important button to, to beautify uh, mm -hmm. the, the JavaScript. And then I'll just copy and paste and exchange this URL, which is there. And now when we look at that function, what it does, it uh, uh, fetches the URL, waits for the response. Uh, if the response is not okay, it writes an error message. If it's okay, um, it, uh, uh, it uh, converts it to a JSON, it requests the JSON of the response and locks it into the console. But when we now, just look into the console and when I save it, nothing happens yet. Why? That's easy. We have to call this function. So I call the get data function now and we'll see what happens. There we go. Uh, the, the, this function writes, reads the JSON. Uh, that we've defined in the dashboard and that we've modified in the dashboard. We can see that here in particular on, on the Brighton because the title is the, the shorter one. And uh, yeah, we almost can use it. The only thing what we need to do is instead of, uh, well, having a JSON there, we assign it the data to our lookup table. Yeah, I can write the lookup table there as well. Uh, there is the lookup table. And uh, there we go. There's a little bit more what, what we need to do. Uh, we still get an, an error. And we'll get the error because the fetch, the, the fetch function works um, asynchronous. And it takes a little while, uh, a moment to read uh, the JSON uh, from the singular dashboard. So we cannot directly call this function which uh, just because of the timing, but what we can do is we can just call it then 
right after we receive the lookup table. Now let's see how this uh, how this uh, works. Now our error is gone. Uh, we read the data from here, and uh, let's see what happens. Can we modify this? Yeah, we can modify this. But this all looks uh, looks pretty pretty neat. Uh, the results look a bit weird because we don't want to have the ID here. This is what we actually uh, defined the, the first part of the code uh, because we modify it. Uh, we want to define, we want to have the title here and the try code um, in the score bug. So let's modify that. So the match up gets the title and uh, we also can just remove the comments because now we have the color there uh, and the score bar it gets the try code that's how we called it so let's see now this uh, already looks looks much better so we control uh, the logo the name the try code which is quite nice. Now we also need to control the background color here. I can add that easily because I think I removed that previously from the matchup. Now oh, it's there. Actually, it's actually it's there. Let me see. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, we, we already control it. I've just been selecting two teams that almost have the same color, so this is a, a little bit confusing. There we go. So this all looks pretty good. So what else can we do? Um, there is our full screen matchup graphics. Oh, there is it, there it is. And within the full screen matchup graphic, we just copy and paste uh, a bit of code and what this does is um, it uh, gets the references to widgets, to the title, to the subtitle, then to the team logos and uh, to the direct angles behind the team logos, because this is what we control. Uh, then within the update composition, and this is actually what I need to uh, extend here, that's here. It's the full screen matchup. I sent the team details here. Uh, we sent the background color, that's clear. Uh, the image, that's clear. And uh, in the title, uh, what we uh, add there is it's the title from team one. Then we add uh, a versus team two. So this title is automatically then, then um, created depending on the teams you select. And then the subtitle will show the team name and the capacity of the home team. Because usually uh, uh, team one is the home team. And so we will use this information uh, also from the JSON to display that. So let me save it. And now, uh, well, there is Arsenal versus Crystal Palace. So that's Arsenal versus Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is, is here. Now we say it's Chelsea. And when we change uh, the team one, also the information about uh, uh, the, the stadium um, is changing. Well, that's... Uh, a quick and, and short uh, deep dive into the possibilities of selection control nodes um, combined with composition scripting. It's really powerful, and you've done a phenomenal job, Thomas, of going into the going into the details. And obviously, as Catherine mentioned, we will provide this 
composition and the JSON that uh, Thomas prepared so that you guys can take this and expand on it, modify it. Um, to have a known working version, which covers three populating um, properties across three subcompositions um, with JSON, whether it's internal JSON, meaning manual or external. So it's awesome. Um, yeah, well done, Thomas. That's a very deep, deep dive. Um, but like, like Stephen said, we'll have a template that's completed, like like what you see right here, so you can reverse engineer it. Um, you can also download the soccer version of the fresh theme from the template library, which is what we use. We stripped out a lot of the elements, so there's just three graphics in there: the score bug, the lower, and then the um, the matchup, the full screen matchup. Um, but if you wanted to try and you know hook up this sample JSON data to all of those graphics, by all means, do that. Um, just to get familiar with this. It is obviously quite advanced. It's a deep dive, but um, for your operators, having one, you know, control node for each team as opposed to, you know, three or four is a lot, you know, easier of an experience, so. Um, two comments. I saw a, in the chat, someone was asking, does Singular Live have any video tutorials on the um, fundamentals that are possible programmatically? That would be a that would be a tr tricky one to do because because we have a script editor built in to Singular um, that can significantly advance the possibilities of what you can do with Composer. Honestly, the sky is the limit. I mean, you're talking a Java scripting uh, composition script editor is what we have. So the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, you can go get data. You can in, in this case, we're getting data from a from a file that we happen to be hosting the JSON internally, but that file could be outside of Singular. Um, in, in terms of what's possible programmatically, I mean, the sky's the limit. Uh, I'd like to remind people too, that as you, sometimes it's not obvious that when we start building these amazing looking graphic, this is all web development. Everything we're doing is web. Um, if anyone out there is familiar with building like web pages, that's exactly what we're doing here. And you can do amazing things with web pages. So the same principle holds for, for singular. So what is possible? Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm blown away each and every day when I see users, what they're able to do with Thomas, Suzanne are able to do with advanced scripting. Um, I, I would actually, <clears throat> and there you see Thomas showing the, well, essentially what you're seeing is the, the, it's a, the uh, an Uno app. Uh, displaying the control nodes in Uno, and it's stylized a little different, right? Uno has a different CSS, um, the way we visualize the the UI interface, which is, I think, really nice and intuitive. Um, if you don't mind, I want to share my screen because I want to chime in. Uh, there's the outputs. I've got a few things that I'm, I'd like to add to this as I was watching Thomas. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, and what I want to touch on is um, you're looking at the um, account where uh, Thomas was working on. Here's his JSON. A couple of things that maybe aren't super intuitive. Sometimes people forget you're going to need to hit this inspection button, inspector, to expose the JSON. And down here at the bottom is the ability to edit it. And Thomas touched on that. But I find some users um, uh, sometimes get tripped up to inspect this. And this is true for whether you're inspecting an image. Right now I have a JSON file selected. Whether you're, if you inspected an image, for example, you're going to see uh, the properties of the image, how big it is and what so, so forth. But the thing I wanted to touch on is I highly recommend what I did while Thomas was doing this demo is I actually took his JSON and imported it into a Google Sheet. This is how I prep and a lot of our customers prep the creation of those JSONs. Um, so I would recommend for people who maybe don't want to start from scripting this from the ground up. If you use our example, but then you want to change the teams, changes to the Bundesliga, for example, or any sport. Um, as you can see here, I have just a simple uh, Google Sheet and I have installed this add-on in Google. It's called Export Sheet Data. Let's go ahead and copy that into the, into the chat. Where is my chat? Um, maybe some of you use this, maybe you don't. Super powerful when you do that, you will get an extension called export sheet data. 
you it, at first you look at this as maybe a little daunting. It really isn't. I want the current sheet. And the only thing I have to check down here is turn this into a JSON, right? As an array. And when I visualize this, it'll take a second to process and convert it. Pretty straightforward. I can copy this, right? And then I can paste this. Oop, this is the file just opened. Oh, where was I? Here we go. Right here when I hit edit. So I find this a really easy tool um, to manage the data and generate those JSONs. So again, you could modify, you could extend on this and add to it, uh, reduce it, um, and that type of thing. So and you can even use Google Functions, right, to pull in data. Um, they have various oh, yeah. like stock data and oh yeah, absolutely, stuff. absolutely. Um, so, um, but I would say just at its basic, this is your go-to. How do I generate these Google Sheets? Because it's very easy when you are um, editing the Google, the JSON, whether it's in the composition or even here to make an error. And I don't know if you noticed when Thomas was um, editing the JSON inside the composition before he got to the external file, you notice it goes red. That's our prompt to tell you there's a red line. That's our prompt to tell you that the JSON is no longer valid, right? So by using this technique, you really minimize that um, error that's so easy to do when you're manually typing in JSON. I do it all the time. So I find this tool extremely, immensely uh, helpful. Um, and again, the, um, the nice thing about an external file is if, let's say you have somebody can be just managing the data, that's all they're doing, right? They could have multiple sheets of data, right? This is should be more aptly named EPL. Let's say you have multiple teams um, and they're, that's all they do. That's their task is managing the data, whether it's you as a one man band doing it, or maybe you have somebody else on your team that's managing it. Um, by using the external file method rather than the internal, then you don't have to, as Thomas said, go into the composition, change the file, everything's external. And don't forget that this file, this file can be used across multiple compositions. Right? It can be accessed. So you might have, I don't know, four different styles, if you will, all using the same JSON file, which is powerful, but also you have to pay attention because if you, you know, delete this or change it, you know, you're hitting multiple compositions at the same time. Um, but I, th I think I might be wrong about this, Thomas. You would know if you delete it, we do cache the URL. For a period of time, is that correct? I mean, you obviously would not want to delete it, but that's the case with our images, at least. If you happen to accidentally delete it from your no, If you delete it, it's uh, first moved to the trash and then uh, delete it permanently after 30 days. Okay, yeah. yeah. Still yeah, not so... ideal, but it won't break immediately, so. Yeah, don't delete that thing. Yeah, don't. <laughs> exactly. Or do. Um, Great demo. Um, I don't have to share anymore. I'll go ahead and stop unless there's any other questions. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Let me just double check. I really like these deep dives because it shows on one level what's possible. Maybe if somebody isn't a um, super advanced scripting, but again, download the, the example that Thomas gave, gave you. And if you break it, you know, you can always restore using the revision function in the composition, um, or I should say function feature. Um, so you can always roll back to a known good version, but the pieces are there. The two big pieces you need there are that external JSON file, which we'll make available and the composition and you're off to the races. Um, uh, we had a, a question from Corey about providing a link to the export sheet data extension. Um, oh, did I pop that in? I thought I popped that in, did I? Oh, you know what? Maybe you did. I think you did. He did, it just got buried further down. So I have, uh, I just re sent it. Export sheet data. There's also another one I use quite frequently. It's called Beautify JSON, if I'm not mistaken. And all that does is if you open up the JSON, if you double click on the JSON file that's in your dashboard, it's going to open up in a browser tab, obviously. Um, I think it's called JSON View, which just presents it on the page on the browser tab a little bit more elegantly than maybe Google does by default. I sometimes use that. Um, I think that covers everything. That, that was the only thing I wanted to add. Phenomenal job, um, 
Thomas. Really, you went into enough detail, including showing the console and the browser um, where uh, you can really get down to exactly what's going on. Um, and then you stepped back and got us in the composition. So the example is pretty straightforward. I would challenge people to add more properties. Thomas hit the big three, I call them. The text property of the text widget. He sent data to that. He sent data to the uh, fill gradient of the rectangle widget. And the last one was, the, uh, which is handling the color and then the logo. Yeah. So you sent an image to the um, image property, the URL. And also the shortened name, which- Yeah. You call that title, Thomas, was that the property? Not... Yeah, it's uh, using the, the title and the tri code. Yeah. So the ID is usually just uh, assigned to a linked property. The title is what you see in the in the UI in the selection box, and when we add more um, properties to this uh, JSON, then you, you you can extend it as you like, and then uh, use it to uh, assign um, these properties to widget properties. There is one which is not obvious, and so I'd, I'd like to to show that. Um, and Seven share my screen quickly, uh, which is uh, the fill gradient, which we use to set the color. Uh, the fill gradient is uh, on the rectangle, and that's what you define, where you define the color, what you set it here. But why is it fill gradient and, and, and color? How do you find out this? Um, this uh, property names. Mm -hmm. There are various options, but the easiest one is uh, just in the uh, widget, uh, in the composition script editor, uh, click the widget explorer. And the widget explorer shows all the different widgets that are used in that particular composition. So in, the, in this one, it's only four. When we click on the rectangle, there is an entire list of all the widget properties you can set from the script, uh, including the bevel size, the style, and there is it. That's the fill gradient, that's the color. And it's uh, it's written in Campbell case. There's the, the height, outline width, and so forth. So all those properties, you can set them directly from the composition script. And uh, this describes the type um, of uh, the uh, property which is expected. So and so when it says gradient, how would you know that it is a hex value? Uh, well, uh, it doesn't necessarily tell you that it's it's uh, a hex value. Um, within Singular, we use uh, tiny colors and the tiny color API to manage colors. So you could use a color name red, green, blue, light gray, crimson, iris, whatever, um, which is the HTML color name, and we convert it into RGBA value. Uh, if you use HTML gradient definitions, which are pretty, uh, could be pretty complicated, uh, mm -hmm. then you also can set that and assign that uh, to the field gradient property. Uh, but the easiest way is uh, if you just have a flat color, Set, set it in RGBA or RGB or in hex values or in the color name if there is one. So lots of different, you know, definitions or. I remember when we added that property list in the in inspector you just showed um, a, a while ago, super handy. So you can know what, what properties you can um, modify mm -hmm. um, within a specific widget. So it's a really powerful tool. The script editor is one of the probably most powerful features of the platform for sure. Um, I don't see any other questions. I hope everyone got some good information out of this deep dive. So unless we have anything else, we could probably wrap up here pretty soon. Um, thank you everybody for, uh, thanks for the same words. In the chat. Um, yeah, Thomas, thank you. Phenomenal job as always. And um, 
uh, we will, I guess, wrap up and say thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll yeah, be back again, back again with something cool. Yes, um, and expect that email probably on Monday with, um, you know, all the resources that you'll need to reverse engineer everything we covered today. So, yeah. That's cool. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Enjoy your weekend. Catherine, thank you. Suzanne, thank you. I know you're back there <laughs> behind the curtain. She's yeah, there. there she is. <laughs> I knew she was there. Thanks for the kind words in the chat, everybody, and really uh, enjoyed this one myself. I learned actually a few little details uh, from Thomas, as I always do. So stay tuned. There'll be more. And um, take care, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thanks, take guys. care. Bye, Bye. guys. Yeah.